The Deceptive Appearance of the Devil 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13-14 through 14. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The greatest strategy of the devil is deception, and this is clearly stated in Scripture. From the beginning, and even now, he continues to be deceptive, and he will persist in this approach. Deception is his unchanging strategy, which is why the Bible warns us not to be ignorant of his schemes. The devil doesn't come to us with a frightening appearance of red face and horns. Instead, he disguises himself as everything we've ever desired. If he always appeared with red eyes, horns, and a tail, nobody would easily fall victim to him. The physical caricature often associated with the devil is just a portrayal. The devil doesn't manifest in scary ways. Rather, he pretends to be our friend and presents himself as someone with solutions to our problems. He appears helpful and harmless, but his true mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. It is crucial to recognize that the devil's deceptive nature is what makes him dangerous. He seeks to lure people into his snares by presenting enticing offers or appealing paths that seem beneficial at first. By disguising himself as a helper, he gains trust and gradually carries out his destructive intentions. Therefore, we must remain vigilant and discerning, not being swayed by appearances or deceptive tactics. We need to be aware of the devil's schemes and guard ourselves against his deceitful ways. By staying rooted in God's truth and seeking his guidance, we can resist the devil's temptations and stand firm against his strategies of deception. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. In the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 14, we are warned. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. These words should give us pause and cause us to reflect on the subtlety of the enemy's tactics. It is important to understand that Satan's intention is not to appear as a dark and malevolent being. No, his strategy is much more insidious. He presents himself as an angel of light, someone who appears good, righteous, and trustworthy. In doing so, he seeks to lure us away from the path of truth and righteousness. In the world we live in today, it seems that there is confusion about what is truly good and what is truly evil. People are calling things that are good evil and things that are evil good. It's puzzling and concerning, but there is an explanation for this. You see, the God of this world, referring to Satan, has deceived many people into believing that the evil they support is actually good. Satan, being cunning and deceptive, has twisted their understanding and perception of what is right and wrong. He has clouded their judgment, leading them astray from the truth. When people genuinely believe that what they are doing is good, even though it is actually evil, it is a result of the enemy's influence. Satan has planted lies and false ideas in their minds, making them think that their actions and beliefs are righteous and noble. He takes advantage of their vulnerability and feeds them with deceptive ideologies. This deception is particularly prevalent in our world today with the constant bombardment of conflicting messages and distorted values. Society often promotes selfishness, immorality, and harmful behaviors as if they are positive and acceptable. When we think of angels of light, we envision beings of purity and holiness. Satan takes advantage of this association to gain our trust. He manipulates our perception and understanding, making us believe that what he offers is good and desirable. But let us not be deceived. Just because something appears good does not mean it aligns with God's truth. We must be vigilant and discerning, for Satan's deception knows no bounds. The devil is a deceiver, and his tactics involve convincing people that what is evil is actually good, and what is dark is actually light. Sadly, this world often aligns itself with darkness rather than embracing the light. It has been influenced by the devil's deception. The devil has a cunning way of disguising himself as everything we desire. When it comes to temptation, he knows our vulnerabilities and will not hesitate to target us 
in areas where we are prone to be susceptible. The Bible acknowledges that we are not all the same, and as individuals, we have specific sins that easily entangle us. It is crucial to recognize that the devil's intention is to lead us astray and away from God's truth. He will use whatever means necessary to deceive and tempt us. That is why it is vital to be self-aware and understand our own weaknesses and areas of susceptibility. By being aware of our own vulnerabilities, we can be better equipped to resist the devil's schemes and avoid falling into temptation. Additionally, we must rely on the guidance of God and His Word to discern between good and evil, light and darkness. The Bible provides us with a standard of truth and righteousness. By aligning ourselves with God's principles, we can discern the devil's deception and choose the path of light instead of being swayed by his deceitful tactics. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. The sin that so easily entangles you is what the devil will present to tempt you. If you struggle with lust, the devil will present you with all the opportunities for you to lust. If you struggle with sexual immorality, he will present you with the opportunities to fulfill your lustful desires. If you struggle with lying, the devil will present situations for you that are convenient for you to lie. The devil is tempter and deceiver. The Bible describes him as both these things. The devil can quite literally give the world to a person because he is the God of this world. He can give fame to people and promote them in life. He attempted to do that with Jesus. Matthew chapter 4, verses 8-9 through nine. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. It is good to be blessed, but if the devil is the source of any of these in your life, the end is regrettable. Satan is very smart. He is a deceiver, a murderer, a liar, and a thief, but he is not a fool. If he offers you a cap, his mission is to chop off your head. The devil will never give people anything without taking something of greater value from their lives. I know you have heard the saying, give the devil an inch and he will take a mile, but it's more like, give the devil an inch and he will take the whole country. Just after Jesus finished his 40 days and 40 nights fasting, the Bible recorded he was hungry. Matthew chapter 4, verses 2 through 4. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil took advantage of an opportunity to tempt Jesus. Without being filled with the Spirit, it can be challenging to discern certain temptations until we fall into them. It is astonishing to think of the audacity of Satan to tempt the Son of God right after he had finished fasting for 40 days. The devil often exploits our current situations to tempt us. He knew Jesus was hungry and saw enticing him with food as the best way to make him stumble. The way the devil presented his proposition to Christ seemed harmless. He said, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. It would have been easy to fall into this satanic trap especially after such a long fast. Many of us might not recognize it as the voice of the devil. Instead, we may view it as an opportunity to prove our anointing. We need to be cautious about the suggestions we entertain when we are in need, as the devil may be enticing us. It is essential to stay alert and discerning, relying on the guidance of the Holy Spirit to recognize the devil's tactics. By being aware of our vulnerabilities and seeking God's wisdom, we can resist the devil's temptations and remain faithful to God. Let us be cautious and discerning when faced with enticing suggestions or opportunities, ensuring that we align ourselves with God's will and not fall into the devil's trap. Again, the devil promised to give Jesus all the kingdoms and the glory of this world if only he would bow to him 
in Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. Doesn't that seem to be a great testimony? Jesus was sent to save the world, and now the devil is promising to give him the world already. Brethren, be careful of shortcuts. It could be the devil's trick against you. The condition the devil gave Jesus was enough to prove that such promise was not from God. He wanted Jesus to bow to him, thereby alluring him into idolatry. But Jesus could discern him, although he was disguised. If the devil could approach Jesus in such a cunning way, he would definitely do the same to us. Don't expect to see the devil coming to you with horns before you discern his deceptions. He will come through your current needs, but you can always discern him through the written word of God. The devil can quote the word of God to confuse you, but whatever he tells you will not align with the character of God. He quoted the scriptures to Jesus, but his deceptions were not hidden. Jesus knew exactly what every scripture meant and the right way to apply it. The Bible is a prophetic book. Anyone can interpret it in a way it will suit his or her selfish interest. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 admonishes that we should let the word of God to dwell in us richly and in all wisdom. We must not only know what the Bible says, we must receive the wisdom to apply it correctly. Satan always comes in subtle ways to deceive people. Therefore, we must be on guard against him. Finally, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8-9. through 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world.